If you ever asked yourself how to manage config files or environment variables in Kubernetes, this video is the right one for you. I will show you how to use config maps and secrets in Kubernetes to manage your application's configuration settings and credentials, such as passwords or certificates. To demonstrate that, we will deploy an Nginx web server and a MySQL database, so it's also a great tutorial to learn how to run websites or web-based apps in Kubernetes. And that's probably one of the most common tasks why you would want to run a Kubernetes cluster, maybe in your cloud infrastructure or even in your home lab. And by the way, do you know what's also crucial in your home lab or cloud environments? Secure authentication. And if you want to secure your Kubernetes clusters, Linux servers, web applications or databases with two-factor authentication and an audit logging, then take a look at the sponsor of this video, it's Teleport. Teleport is an open source access proxy to manage your server environment securely. You can use their free community edition completely self-hosted at no cost. And suppose you want to use Teleport within your company environment and secure your development or operation teams. In that case, Teleport also offers an enterprise version with additional 24-7 support and single sign-on. It's a great application, so just download and try it out. You will find a link to their website in the description down below. If you're deploying applications in Kubernetes, such as web servers, databases, or any other application, you often need a way to manage configuration settings or any credentials for them. In Docker, we simply mount these files as volumes inside the containers and use environment variables in the deployments to pass arguments to the application. In Kubernetes, we do it in a similar way, but because the volume management in a high available cluster is a lot different from a single Docker host, we are also facing additional challenges in how we are storing and securing this data. Remember when we discussed local storage and shared storage in a cluster in my last video? The problem is that you need a persistent way of storing the information securely and reliably in a cluster. For example, if you want to run a MySQL database, you need to somehow store the root user's password for the application. Or if you want to run a web server, you might want to inject a specific configuration settings such as header information or other server settings you want to change. And these values or arguments need to be stored in a safe and a central place where all the pods have access to within the entire cluster. And that's exactly why we're using config maps and secrets in Kubernetes, because these objects are Kubernetes resources and they are stored like any other resource, like the pods, the deployments or the services in the central configuration database of Kubernetes. The first resource type I want to talk about in a bit more detail is a config map. And config maps are used to store key value pairs. As for example, if you want to pass some environment variables into your deployments, you can use a config map to store these values. And in your deployments, you can then add a reference to the values provided in this specific config map. But you can also put any files in there. For example, you could also store the entire content of your configuration files in a config map. And this is very useful because then you don't need to mess around with files within the container's file system. You can just edit the config map if you might want to change the configuration of your deployment. To demonstrate how config maps work on Kubernetes, I will use it to deploy a very simple Nginx web server on my Kubernetes cluster and I will use the config map to change certain aspects of the behavior of the web server by just overriding the default configuration files. And uh, by the way, if you want to take a look at all the different YAML manifests and you just want to follow the tutorial along, then just go to my personal GitHub page, you will find a link in the description down below, and then navigate to my boilerplates repository inside the Kubernetes templates and then CM and secrets folder, which stands for config maps and secrets. And then you will find a list of all the different YAML manifest files I'm using in this tutorial. And we will start with the first file, which will declare a simple config map where we put the configuration file for our Nginx web server in. So let's take a look at the first file. It's very simple to declare config map in Kubernetes. You will just start by declaring it uh, with a kind config map and then give it a name, for example, Nginx HD. CM, and then you just define all the values like this here. You can use it as a key value pair store. So just declare your key column and then put the value in here. But you can also use it to declare any files. So for example, just define the file name, put a column and then use the pipe operator here. And under the pipe operator, just put the content of the file. So for example, I'm using this with the nginx.conf 
configuration file, which is the default configuration file of an Nginx web server, and then put all the content of an Nginx configuration file and paste it in here. I just want to declare another location here, which is active when you just enter something with test here. And I just want to return a 401, which stands for unauthorized. So this is something that usually shouldn't happen. When you um, add a location that is not found on the web server's location, it should return a 404, which is not found. But for this specific location, we can just return a 401 to test if our configuration has been accepted. And now when we take a look at the nginx deployment file, you can see I just add a very simple nginx deployment, set up the name like nginx HTTP, the replicas, um, the matching labels for our services objects later. And here we are just running a simple nginx container from the nginx image and I want to expose the port 80 here. And here we can put all the configuration files as a volume mount inside the containers file system. So this is something that I've explained in my last video about persistent volumes and persistent volume claims on Kubernetes. So if you haven't watched this video and you don't understand how volumes are working here, then go and check that out. And then it's very easy to understand what's happening here. But what we just need to do to put all the configuration files into our containers is we just declare a volume, just give it a name like nginx HDPCM and use the type config map here and then just refer to the Kubernetes object nginx HDPCM that we've just declared in our other other configuration file and then it will just take every file that is declared here so we can also declare multiple files for example and will mount it inside the mount path of our containers volume mounts here. So for example, this nginx.conf file will be placed in this location here and that will just override the default configuration file of our nginx web server. Let's also take a look how that works when we deploy those resources. So first of all, I just want to deploy the config map here that I'm going to use in my deployment manifest. And then just start deploying our nginx web server here by using the deployment manifest. So you can also check if your pods are running here by just get any pod resources and you should see that a new container or a new pod is now created with the nginx web server that is currently up and running here. So if you want to check what's going on inside here you can also open a shell inside the container here by just execute an interactive terminal here on this pod and then paste in a bin a bash terminal here to open a shell inside this container. And then we can go into the at etc nginx folder. Let's do an ls command here. And you can also see there is our file that we've declared in the config map and mounted via a volume into the containers file system. And if we cut this file, you can also see all the changes that we've declared in the config map into the containers file system. So let's also check if that is working by exposing this web server. And I'm going to use a simple load balancer object. So I've explained this in my Kubernetes beginner tutorial, how this stuff is working. And I just want to expose this high pod here on my Kubernetes cluster so I can run a test connection from my um, terminal to the Kubernetes service here. So let's also deploy the service object. And once this is done, we should be able to open a curl connection here to the Kubernetes cluster on this specific pod and we get test successful back from our Nginx server. So this is just a simple HTML test file that I've placed into the persistent storage location of my Kubernetes node and mounted it inside the containers file system as well. And we can just try to check if our unauthorized uh, 401 return a statement in the config file is successful by just trying to open a test location here. And you can see that will give us a 401 authorization request. Required. So the config file is working as expected. Using config maps to store key value pairs or configuration files is great. But what if you want to use it to store sensitive information? Adding any credentials or API tokens in clear text in your deployment manifests? This probably isn't a good idea and I hope you can imagine why. So you might want to add more protection to these values than using a simple config map. And in these situations, you can use a Kubernetes secret. Secrets are very similar to config maps and they work exactly the same way. But the values inside a secret are obfuscated with a base64 encoding. And they are also sometimes hidden by asterisks in any administrative UIs. Just like config maps, you can use them to store key value pairs for passwords, tokens or other sensitive credentials. And you can also put 
file content into them. That's very useful if you want to store certificates for SSL connections. Okay, so just like I said, you can use secrets to add a little bit more protection to your credentials, API tokens, or even certificate files and mount them the same way like config maps into your deployments and pods. So I'm going to show you how that works by just trying to deploy a very simple MySQL server here. And this is the deployment file. It's very, very similar to um, the Nginx web server, but with one difference, we want to avoid storing any credentials like the MySQL root password in our environment variables here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just running a simple MySQL server and I just want to declare the MySQL root password. Usually I would need to put all the values of the environment variables in my deployment manifest, but I'm not going to do that. I will replace this with a secret file. So first of all, let's create our Kubernetes secret resource and I am using the MySQL dash secret object here. So just declare another object from the kind secret and then just give it a name like MySQL secret and then you need to declare a secret type. So this opaque, I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it, I'm sorry, but uh, this uh, type defines a generic um, type of secret. But you can also see in the Kubernetes documentation there are different types of secrets here. So this is an arbitrary user-defined data but you could also use it to create service account tokens Docker configuration, Docker uh, config basic authentication, SSH, and even uh, a data for TLS server or um, a bootstrap token data. So whatever that means. So we're using this generic type because that can be used for anything. You might want to use it in environment variables or for certain files. It doesn't really matter. And in the documentation, you can also see that you can create those resources with a command here. So with the kubectl create secret, you can just generate an empty secret manifest and then change the values inside here but you actually don't need to do that you can just define your file um, in the first place and then just apply the resource like any other resource on kubernetes here and what we're doing here is we're setting the type to opaque <laughs> and then use the attribute string data so what happens is when you use the type string data is you can put anything in a regular string inside this file and once you apply this resource to your kubernetes cluster it will be encoded with base64 so for example, just define your key values here. So define your root pass and give it a value like test one, two, three. And then we want to apply this resource here. And inside our MySQL deployment here, we want to replace this clear text password with reference to our secret. So what we need to do is we need to change this value here to a value from. And then we can add a secret key reference and we need to give it the name of our secret resource so for example my sql secret and then we also need to define the key otherwise kubernetes doesn't know so which key should we refer to and we will use the name of the key the root pass so just enter key column and then the name of the key you want to reference. So this should also work. I'm not using any persistent volume mounts here to store the data on the server because I don't need that. Now, usually if you want to run a MySQL database, you should also define a volume that stores the MySQL data in a persistent volume or however you want to store it. But for this secret example, we will just use this simple deployment. So back in the terminal, we first of all want to deploy our secret, of course, otherwise the deployment wouldn't uh, look up this secret properly. So uh, once this resource has been created, we can also get all the different resources in Kubernetes here. So for example, if you want to get all the secrets in the current namespace, you can also query them here. And you can see that there always will be a default token for the Kubernetes service account. But there's also our custom defined secret, which is my SQL secret. And if we want to edit uh, this a secret, you can also use the edit command. So for example, let's try to edit our my SQL secret. And you can see that the content of the password is no not stored in clear text anymore. It is stored in a base64 encoding. So if you now assume this would be a secure way to store your credentials, well, uh, we will talk about this at, um, at the end of this video. But what you could do to decode this password, you can just copy it and just echo it in a Linux terminal, for example, and then pipe that to the base64 command and just decode it. And that will give you back the clear text password test one, two, three. Okay, so that's not what I wanted to show you. Instead, let's try to apply our MySQL deployment here. So let's run this. And to check if our password has been applied successfully to our deployment, let's also open a shell inside our 
port here. And then we simply can execute the MySQL client command to open a connection into our SQL server here and use the password test123 we have defined in the secret. And you can see this is now working and the deployment has set our password. So let's uh, exit this connection again. Let's clear the terminal. And I also want to show you how to use secrets to store any sensitive files uh, in a deployment. For example, if you want to run an Nginx web server and you want to use it to store any certificates that you have defined or you want to upload to your applications, you can also do that. So in the second deployment of our Nginx web server, you can see that we are defining now an Nginx HTTPS server that will not just run an unencrypted Nginx web server, but an encrypted connection with self-signed certificates we want to upload to our Kubernetes cluster. So you can see I'm not really changing so much in this deployment here like before we are exposing the servers, but uh, we are now exposing the containers port 4 for free. By the way, I could also expose the port 80. And now I want to use the same config map to put the configuration of our Nginx web server in here. But I also add another mount path, which is called Nginx HTTPS secret. And that will mount all the certificates we are just uh, creating a secret object for inside the etc nginx ssl folder and set this volume to read only. So you can see in the volumes configuration here, we just have the usual config map for our configuration file, but also add a reference to the secret object and use the secret name nginx https secret. And this is very similar to the MySQL secret here. So just declare the secret object, give it a name, and then put in the string data attribute. And then you can declare multiple files here. For example, you can declare a server dash assert.pem, which will be the server self signed certificate. You can just put the content of the certificate in here and then declare a second file for the, for the certificate key here. So I'm not going to show you the content of the certificate and the certificate key, but just assume I've put that into this file. And in the configuration map of our Nginx web server, we of course also need to change some things here. So first of all, we need to add a listen port for our SSL connection, the listening port for for free. And then we also need to reference our SSL certificate and certificate key files. And once you've set up everything correctly, you just reference to the correct files and put them into the correct folder. We can now start deploying our resources here. By the way, I also changed the service object a little bit because I needed to add another port for the HTTPS connection. So let's first of all start with deploying our config map, then the secret, the deployment, and last but not least, our service object here. And let's try to query if the pod is up and running here. So let's try to get all the pods and everything is running. So that should be fine now. So now in Oracle request, we need to change the pod from HTTP to HTTPS. And I also I'm using a different port here. Try to get the 443 port, which should give us a connection from our self signed certificate. You should also see an error message here, if I'm correct. Yeah, and this is because I've used a self signed certificate, which is generally not trusted. Uh, but we can also skip that check with the dash K parameter, and then we should get back the content of our server. And the same should also work for the HTTP connection on the same server. So let's also check that. And everything is up and running now. And if you now assume, well, this is a great way to deploy any kind of website, web application and protect it with SSL certificates. Yeah, this is one possibility, but there's also a better option how to do that by using ingress controllers and reverse proxies in Kubernetes. Uh, by the way, this will be the part of any future videos in my Kubernetes tutorial series here on YouTube. So if you want to learn Kubernetes together with me, then just take a look on my YouTube channel. I also put you a link to the video series in the description down below and then we can learn all this stuff together. Okay guys, so I hope this helped you to understand config maps and secrets in Kubernetes. If you're now wondering if using a secret is the best and the most secure way to store credentials and sensitive information, well, you should always consider that the content of the secrets is stored in clear text in the ad CD. Yeah, they might be using a base 64-bit encoding, but that's actually the same as storing it in clear text because anyone with access to the ad CD or the Kubernetes API can just decode it. However, someone still needs access to it. So access to the API or to the database in the first place. So if you are managing your Kubernetes credentials securely, in that case, you don't share it with anyone or you use an authentication proxy like Teleport, 
then it's still much better to use secrets than storing the sensitive information directly in the config manifests or the containers. But as you can imagine, as it's not the best way to store credentials, I will do another video about it in the future, so stay tuned. And until then, I've put you another great video to watch next in the description of this video. So thanks everybody for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.